because you've been asking for them and now I finally caved in and I'm going to do one for you. Uh, care guides. You guys have been asking me for care guides for the last couple of years now and some of the animals I keep. And the reason I've been hesitant to do care guides is because a lot of my animals I haven't had long enough that I really feel experienced enough to... I'm not an expert, you know, I'm just a keeper, like probably like you and most of my viewers. Um, I've only been into reptiles for a short while, and so I don't really feel qualified to give you the information that you want. There's tons of other care sheets, care videos, books, and guides, and things that you can look for that are out there. That'll give you much better information than I can, as well as more experienced breeders and old-timers and things like that. And I'm not one of those. I just have one as a pet, and, you know, I'm going to give you a care guide because I was asked for one, and I do notice that there's kind of a lack of info about the Grey Bandits on YouTube, so... I figured I'd start with, with that, uh, and that is what she is. She's a gray banded king snake, uh, Lamperpeltis alterna. So, Lamperpeltis is the king snake and milk snake genus. Uh, recent study shows that the gray bandits are more closely related to milk snakes than they are to uh, other king snakes, but it doesn't matter because they're on the same genus anyway. These guys come from the uh, southwestern uh, North America. You'll find them in Texas, parts of Texas, uh, a small portion of New Mexico, as well as northern and central Mexico. And they, uh, they, they live in arid habitats, uh, rocky places, talus slopes, canyons, uh, road cuts, places like that where they can hang out and hide. They're mostly nocturnal and they're a very secretive snake. If you do find them in the wild, it's usually at night, crossing roads and things like that. And uh, for field herpers, they are somewhat of a holy grail, you know, everyone is looking for the gray banded king snake out there. Uh, I've never seen one in the wild. I don't live anywhere near their habitat, so uh, I've opted out to have one as a pet instead. Now these guys used to be pretty heavily collected from the wild. Uh, not so much anymore. They're easy to breed. They're an easy snake. I would even say that they're somewhat of a beginner snake. The biggest thing you want to look out for, with for these guys is um, their dietary needs. So in the wild, they're mostly eating lizards, and in captivity, sometimes it can be hard to switch them from lizards to mice. You're going to want to make sure that uh, they're well started on rodents. Namira was well started on rodents. I never had a problem getting her to eat one. So it's not something you really need to worry about. Just make sure you know where your snake's coming from. And you have two main color phases with the king, with the uh, gray banded king snake. Uh, this is uh, Blair's king snake. So. Uh, You'll make note of these uh, large orange saddles bordered by black and then the gray in between. The Alterna phase has much more gray and black saddles, like little black bands uh, with almost no orange in between. Some of them, depending on the locale, will have a little bit of orange in there, but for the most part they, uh, they're just more gray and black. And then there's all kinds of uh, color variations in between those and there's all kinds of localities and stuff. I don't know Namira's locality, neither did the breeder, um, and it really doesn't matter much to me. Uh, as far as temperament goes, the gray banded king snakes are generally pretty calm. You can see Namira here, she's slowly cruising along. They don't generally musk, and they don't, don't generally bite. In fact, the breeder that I bought her from said that he's never been bitten by one. Of course, Namira's bitten me a number of times when she was younger, for whatever reason. Maybe I smell like lizards, I don't know. But uh, nowadays, she's pretty easy to handle and has a nice even temperament. So, she's not as, I noticed that she's not as fast as some of the other snakes that I have. Like, I have a Puebla milk snake who would be just all over the place right now. But she's pretty content to just sit here. Housing for these guys is pretty straightforward, too. Since they don't get too big, you know, they get about three to four feet. The record, I believe, is uh, 57 inches, which would be something to see. But uh, you're looking at about 20 gallon long. You know, as far as aquariums go, and they would do quite well in a rack system too. But the 20 gallon long, will, that's what she's in, and uh, you want to make sure you know you give them plenty of hide spots. Uh, give her an aspen bedding. Since they come from dry places, uh, a low humidity would be appreciated, but of course supply them with a water bowl. She eats once a week, and a uh, pretty straightforward snake. You know, if you've had corn snakes and milk snakes and king snakes and stuff, then you'll get the idea of what her care is like. Now, the, uh, as far as lifespan goes, you know, uh, about 20 years is how old these guys can get, although I've read about some that have been older, so you're looking at a long time commitment with one of these, and that's the case with most reptiles anyway. But yeah, that about wraps it up for the king snake. We'll go, now we'll go take a, a look at her habitat and see if maybe she'll 
chow down on a mice or some mouse or something like that. Not a very exciting strike, but there you have it. So yeah, here's your setup. It's a pretty standard, uh, you know, kind of snake setup. It's a, this is a 20 gallon long. Um, underneath that half log, there is a heat pad. Got a nice uh, piece of wood here, and she likes it a lot under that fake vine cork bark water dish and yeah aspen bedding so you know like i said pretty standard kind of uh north american colubrid setup kind of the kind of setup you'd give a corn snake or a king snake or any number of other uh species nothing too complicated and this tank will suit her for the rest of her life uh, you know, if I get the chance to give her something bigger, I will, but if not, uh, you know, I won't feel bad about it. But yeah, so that about wraps it up. If you have any, uh, specific questions, go ahead and ask. If you have any thoughts or insight, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And, uh, if there's anybody you want me to do one of these care guides on, just let me know. And we're just gonna sit here and watch her finish that mouse, and then, uh, that's gonna be that. So like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.